All right. In a previous video, you may remember this information right over here. This is where we took a look at the high performance radio links you get with external modules. So for a little recap, Happy Model is making the Express LRS modules and Beta FBV has joined that as well. So you can order from Happy Model and other resellers of Happy Model products and Express LRS 2.4G and also 900 megahertz module and of course the receivers as well. Oh, what we were testing before was a home-built DYI Express LRS module and receiver uh, built by one of the enthusiasts with Express LRS, but ultimately this is using like a development board that's repurposed. You can see all the DIY instructions on how to build a module for Express LRS and the receivers so you could do it at home if you really wanted to. And that's what somebody did for me, sent it to me, and that's what the tests were before. So today we're really gonna see how is Happy Model doing? Is it giving the same results, giving better, giving worse? You know, most people I would think are going to buy Happy Model products or Beta FPV or other modules just because it's easy use. I know, you know, building a module that's kind of outside my interest range. It's, you know, some people really love that stuff, but not for me. I would think the, the most people would you know, be buying a module. So in these new tests, we're going to really, really see two things. Were the results from the DIY tests that we were doing were they legit were better or worse and you know how does that compare against uh, manufactured equipment here from happy model and just a quick review of what we were having from the diy modules uh, you can see down here this is the jitter uh, we were getting so that's basically the packet rate as I've talked about this before in other videos, there's stair steps. The signal comes in in stair steps, and it's how big is the tread on those stair steps. I talked about this in a live stream, but just like going upstairs, you really want the treads to be the same width. You know, then you can kind of run up the stairs. Your body knows what to expect in uh, anticipation for the tread width. But if you had stairs where the tread width was different, uh, it would be very difficult to kind of run up those stairs. It, well, you're, you can't get a, a tempo or a pace. Well, the same thing happens with the flight controller. There's a certain amount of filtering in beta flight or other end flight one and other firmwares to smooth out those stair steps. And if the tread length is different, then, you know, is the filtering really right for it? Depends if the treads, you know, are getting bigger or smaller. You know, if the average tread is a little bit smaller, but then there's some big tread lengths, then obviously it's not going to smooth out those bigger tread uh, length stair steps. So we really want the treads to be the same length uh, for the stair step signal coming in with all RC uh, link transmissions it's again they all come in in packets and those packets are in stair step lengths of around 4 to 20 milliseconds in length so in this scenario here we're looking about uh, 2 milliseconds or 2000 microseconds packets so each packet's about 2000 microseconds and you can see some are a little bigger and some are a little smaller so on and so forth again this is the DIY so let's compare that against what we're getting on the new tests with the happy model data so on the left here, this is the happy model. Uh, and you can see there's a heck of a lot less jitter if I can slide over to here. So ignore the ghost for now. We'll talk about that in just a second. But you can see that, you know, the jitter was improved quite a bit. And that is shown all the way up through. Uh, here is the same if we can slide over here as well. So you can kind of see the same. The red line, and I have these scaled uh, about the same actually can slide this over here you can kind of see this scale is a little bit bigger so over here again the red big improvement there keep moving up through the Express LRS 2.4 G at 150 Hertz uh, you can see here again big improvement there again and uh, going all the way up to 50 Hertz and you can see it's improved all the way across the board of course that's exactly what we would expect so that is the jitter, how efficient or how on point the timing is between the transmitter and the module itself. But what about the N10 latency? How does that compare? So here again on the left, we have the happy model module and the DIY on the right here from the old test. And you can see it's, uh, it's the same. Basically, I didn't really see any difference in N10 packet lengths, you know, uh, for the 500 Hertz, we're running four to around six milliseconds end to end, um, half the packets and half the packets the other. Same thing here. 
Um, same for the 250, we're running 6 to 10. Again, 6 to 10 over here as well. And then we see the same uh, going up through here to the other two, which is expected. I've noticed what's doing these tests is obviously when you see one thing get better or worse, then the rest kind of fall suit. If you get more jitter on one test, then you're going to get more jitter on the rest of the tests at different lengths of time or, or refresh rate, things like that, um, and vice versa. And just to round it off, here's our average end to end. You can see the new data on the left and the old data on the right. It's exactly the same since the histograms were about the same, then the average is going to be about the same as well, of course. Okay, so that is it. So hopefully with that, you can see that, you know, in the last data set we did that the express results are even better for happy model units. I don't, and even DIY, I think there's just something with this specific unit. Um, I know the express guys were getting better results with other equipment. Uh, it could be the hardware itself or it's just something. I don't, I don't really know. But the uh, happy model, it also shows that the happy model is, is keeping up on par uh, with their production and uh, producing great results. So if you were hesitant about happy model units uh, being your control link, based on what I'm seeing, it's it's all on par uh, with what the expectations are from the devs. So if you had any hesitation, you know, take, check it out. I do have links down below for ha this happy model equipment. I'm actually linked to a page I'm generating on my website uh, where you can see all the different things and I have these test results. And uh, yeah, you can go out and check it out and uh, see where you can get this this stuff. Oh, I almost forgot. Back to that ghost thing. So that was the latest result on their latest beta test, which was uh, 1.0.4.1 beta. On the 1.0.3.1 beta, you can see this was the result I was getting, which is much better. So I don't know what's happened since 1.0.3.1 to 1.0.4.1, but it actually got worse. Same exact equipment, same test equipment, same test software, same everything. So yeah, I let Tony know, and I'm sure they're taking a look at it, hopefully. But uh, you can see this is the test result uh, I was getting for Ghost. But uh, if you're a Patreon, you know this already because this is the kind of cool stuff we cover on the Patreon's only videos. Uh, again, link down below for that as well. And if you're pretty sharp, you may have noticed on this sheet that there was R9, ACCST, R9 Access, and the new FR Sky race mode receivers, the RS. It's the Archer RS race mode receiver and did a bunch of test results on those. I didn't show you all the data. Uh, you might have picked up some of the little nit bits, but uh, come back to the next video to check that out. And we'll go through all the intricacies of that testing and what I've observed. And I'll tell you one thing I've learned. Don't turn off telemetry. Turning off telemetry on Crossfire or R9 units is bad juju. It does not make things better. It makes things way worse, Was which is a really unexpected result. So we'll see you on that video. Thanks, everybody. And I hope this helps.